of course, it's nice to isolate questions and to try to get simple answers, but at some point we will need to increase the complexity. And now, again, we are living times where we can use organoids, mm -hmm. which are uh, three-dimensional culture systems where you can have multiple cell types. Of course, they are not perfect because there's still some cell types you cannot have in there. Microglia are not from neuronal uh, origin, so they come mm -hmm. from outside. Uh, there's problems with vascularization mm -hmm. of uh, organoids. And so there's issues. But uh, again, I think it's exciting that we are having tools and access to models that may enable us to address these more complicated questions. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn more about organoids, you can go to our previous podcast with Dr. Zaferu, where we talk about them and IPSCs. Ah, but he is an expert. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. I even have uh, some organoids in the lab and I stand them for my protein of interest from the extracellular matrix. And I'm curious what is going to be the outcome. Maybe this week I will find out. Uh, before we continue with Parkinson's and disease-related topics, I think now is a great moment to talk about, again, animal models. You said just said that we have to increase the complexity of the models, and this is maybe one of the reasons why we need higher animals to study these diseases. And now, in, in particular in, in Europe, there is a, a huge debate whether we, sh we have to shut down research or not. And... We want to spread the word and say that we need animal models in order to progress in science and, and humanity as well. So maybe a couple of sentences. Why why do we need this complex? And how do we study Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative diseases despite the lack of these phenotypes, parts of some of the phenotypes that we yeah. see? Oh, I want to be very clear. We... Uh, we as scientists, we need to have the sense of responsibility and try to minimize animal suffering as much as possible. That should be a priority. I want to be very clear about that. Mm -hmm. We should not use animals just for the sake of uh, using animals. Mm -hmm. There has to be a good question and a good reason for using animals. Now, we also discussed these diseases are very complex. Mm -hmm. as I hope it's becoming evident from our discussion. And there's many aspects that cannot be uh, addressed using simple model systems. Um, we now have, as we also talked about, and you discussed this in a previous in the previous podcast, we have these uh, cell culture systems, uh, 2D IPS uh, cell cultures or 3D organoids, brain organoids. So there's a, a lot of hope that eventually you, we will be able to have these culture systems without... Uh, uh, requiring uh, the use of animals and, and to minimize their suffering. But there are certain aspects of uh, research in this field and in many fields that can only be uh, tackled by using models that recapitulate the complexity of the biological system. And one can say, one can say yeah, but we've used animals for decades and we still don't have a cure for Alzheimer's or for, for Parkinson's. That's true. But that does not mean that those models are not useful. And they are useful. They have to be used responsibly. We have to ask the right questions. But we cannot hope to cure these diseases without testing some of these hypotheses we are testing in a, in a real living organism. And so mice and rats are... Uh, very useful because we have a lot of knowledge and tools and and they they live less time so things can be done more rapidly of course that on the other hand that also poses limitations because maybe they don't mimic all the aspects of the disease non-human primates are very useful and they are being used all around the world in, in china and in other countries that are not as strict with these laws so i think it's really a mistake for europe to be so influenced by those that are defending the animal rights and nothing against them. They, everyone should be able to express their ideas uh, in a democratic manner with respect without uh, creating uh, problems and, and disruptions, uh, but they should be able to express their ideas. What I think is a problem is that we as scientists tend not to be as vocal and tend not to come and defend the need for using these mm -hmm. types of models. Mm -hmm. And I think, as I said, we want to use them responsibly, but in order for us to 
be able to stay competitive in this research field and in many others, we cannot simply ban the use of animal research. Mm -hmm. I don't know if in 50 years or 100 years we'll be in another position where we, we can say, now our models are so good that we don't need them anymore. But this is not where we are today. Mm -hmm. And of course, we should make efforts towards that goal of uh, developing models that will be as good or better than animal models. But a lot of people are working on that. There's many groups in the world trying to develop that field. In parallel, we still need to use animal models. And I have to say, this has been very frustrating here in Germany. We all know uh, in Göttingen, but talking with colleagues in other parts of Germany, they're facing the same problems. Mm -hmm. It's unacceptable. This is a word that I, I use sometimes. Uh, uh, because, you know, we apply for a license to be able to do some experiments in animals, and it takes more than a year, mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. And we go back and forth mm -hmm. uh, with the, the, the veterinarian authorities, and it seems that we are not making progress. Mm -hmm. We have situations where we got funding from a company to do a certain project in animals. It took us more than two years just to be able to start the experiment, and at some point, you know, you can face a situation where the research you proposed that was eventually approved by the authorities is not valid anymore. So you don't even want to do it. And then you run into problems because then if you don't do what you propose and what was approved, then the authorities come and uh, 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 you get into trouble because you didn't do what you proposed. But I mean, after two years or three years, things change. Mm -hmm. So it's a catch-22 situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think authorities are not serving the, 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 the human uh, society well just by trying to block animal use. Mm -hmm. What they should do is help and work with researchers in order to uh, uh, enable us to speed things up, to, uh, um, to, to comply with the three R's rule, with... Uh, this rule that everyone uh, one accepts to reduce, to replace, to refine the models. But we need the models. This is the, the, the bottom line. And I, I want to uh, send a very clear message that I understand that we should not uh, um, do research just to induce suffering in animals, but we need to use animals because nothing uh, recapitulates the complexity of mm -hmm. Uh, the human uh, disease as, as an animal, and so we, we still need it. Neuroscience and beyond. No more. Get inspired.